Round one. Fight. No, no fighting. We're not having fighting today. After going through so many Neo Geo games, I so thought that every single one of them is a fighting game. It's all going to be Fatal Fury this, King of Fighters that. I was surprised there are so many really, really good games for the Neo Geo that are not fighting games. I thought I'd explore a few of them for you today. Now, some of these may or may not be in the top 50 that will be coming out over the next couple of weeks. But I can tell you this, I had such good fun discovering some games that I've never heard of, that I've never played. And I love them. So I hope you enjoy my little overview of some of the games that you can enjoy that aren't fighting games on the Neo Geo. Enjoy. Aero Fighters 2 is a vertical scrolling shoot 'em up arcade game released in 1994. It was released in Japan, North America and Europe and is the second part of the Aero Fighters series. Gameplay is pretty simple, just using two buttons. A button fires things, B button launches a special bomb. When you blow things up, you can pick up a little power up. P, power projectiles, increases the plane's firepower. F, power projectiles, increases the plane's firepower to maximum level instantly last the crap out of anything. Had a lot of fun with this game, really enjoyed it. Blazing Star is the follow-up to Polestar, released in 1995 and is again a side-scrolling shoot-em-up, which was actually a hell of a lot better graphics than its predecessor, but made a little bit easier just to kind of keep the old um, shooting skills going. Another fun game, kind of like R-Type in a way, pick up the power-ups, last the crap out of aliens, it was really fun, I really enjoyed it. I love these type of games. Still, it's not quite our type, but it's a close second place. Still, give it a go, you'll love it. I certainly did. Ganryu is a side-scrolling hack and slash action platform game from 1999. Game was released by Visco Corporation and the description of the game features many oriental names which I'm not going to attempt to pronounce. I will absolutely murder them. But it's basically a game where you run along trying to kill the bad guys, lots of evil ninjas and monsters. And uh, yeah, it's a fun game. You get to jump around the buildings, run across rooftops, smack the crap out of all the bad guys, pick up power-ups, pick up gems, pick up all sorts of things. I really enjoyed this game, quite fun. Ghost Pilots is a vertical scrolling shoot 'em up released in 1991 by SNK. It's pretty straightforward. It's pretty much one of the 1940 type games. But instead of a spaceship or an airplane, you're actually flying a seaplane. That's different for a start. Before starting a stage, a player has to choose a type of bomb, one of two types, so you can blow up the bad guys. Once you get to a certain stage, you actually get a third bomb, which is a napalm. You can just blow everything to smithereens. Another fun game, definitely not a fighting game, a good old fashioned shooting game. Love it. King of Monsters, technically it is a fighting game, but it's not your standard fighting game with these different ninjas beating up other ninjas. You get to choose to be a monster and beat up another monster, smashing up the city as you go. It was really fun. I actually really enjoyed this game. Didn't have a clue what the hell I was doing. I got thrown all over the place, my back smashing into different things, bumping off the other guy. But it was fun. I enjoyed it. I found it more exciting than playing Street Fighter. Not a Street Fighter fan, but I like being a monster. Who doesn't? Last Resort, another horizontal scrolling shoot map by SNK released in 1992. It came out on so many different platforms. PlayStation 2, PSP and the Wii. It came out on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One as well. Yep, it's another shameless R-type game, but it's fun. You've got multi-directional weapons that fire all over the place. You can blow up little cars down at the bottom of the screen as well. I loved it. You can use robot drones and toggle to a stop track position or to rotate around the cyberjet. 
on the Wikipedia does come out with some stuff, but it's a fun shoot 'em up game. I enjoyed it. The Magical Drop series of games, one, two, and three, often referred in Japanese as Magi Draw. Um, basically, it was released on pretty much everything, and the idea is two players stack coloured bubbles against each other, blast the other one with crap. It's kind of Irish Tetris. Sorry, people, if you're Irish, but you know what I mean. It's a fun, challenging game. It's better when you're playing with a friend. And it's just enjoyable. Bright colours, simple gameplay. What's not to like about it? Magician Lord was one of the launch titles for the Neo Geo, released in 1990. Kind of got weird reviews. It was also released in the arcade, but didn't exactly do well. It is a fun game. It is quite a difficult game as well. And uh, yeah, I quite enjoyed it. It's quite basic if you think it's from 1990. It's your standard walk around platforms blasting the crap out of bad guys and bad guys that have got stretchy arms. You can splat them with fire. Boom, boom, boom. It was all right. Not one of the best games I've played at all, but I liked it. Nam. 1975 was another launch title that came out in 1990. It wasn't one of the best games in the world. It kind of reminded me of Terminator, the arcade game, where you used a light gun to shoot the bad guys. This time, the controls were a little bit strange. You kind of moved one way and dived another by holding different combinations and moving around. You could pick up power-ups, pick up bombs, shoot helicopters, and look, I died. It's an all right game. It's not something that I'd rave about, but it's definitely not a fighting game. A shooting one instead. Polestar, another horizontal scrolling shooting game from 1995. It's the predecessor to Blazing Star. You must fight through eight stages by destroying constantly moving formations of enemies and avoiding their projectiles. Yes, it's the original R-Type clone. One of the best, one of the classics. It has been ported and released several times, seeing conversions for the Neo Geo CD and even the Wii Virtual Console. Absolutely brilliant game. It is fun. It's got a good learning curve. They certainly released a decent amount of shoot 'em up games on the Neo Geo, that's for sure. Puzzle Bubble 2, or as it was known in Europe and in America, Buster Move 2. Fantastic game released in 1995. I never played it in the arcade, but I think I've played it on every home console possible. Remember playing it mostly on the Xbox One and even Puzzle Bobble 3. It's the most fun, colourful, cutesy, bubble-popping game you could ever bloody well play. I loved it. It was brilliant. Always playing it. Still play it today. Didn't realise it was first out on the Neo Geo and this is where it originated from, but it's still a great game today give it a go shock troopers is a run and gun arcade game developed by saurus and published by snk in 1997. it's a bloody good game it's one of those eight-way shooters where you take command of one of three soldiers and blast the living daylights out of anything that moves you can even control a tank which just adds that extra element of enjoyment to the game it kind of reminded me of Akari Warriors in a sense, but this was a lot more colourful. This was a lot more fun. Blasting the bad guys is so satisfying. If you're a fan of the run and gun genre, you're going to love this game. Spin Master is a pretty cool arcade platform shooter released by Data East in 1993. This game was the first game that Data East actually released for the SNK Neo Geo. Pretty much exactly the same graphics as a Sega Genesis game called Dashing Desperado. However, the games are completely different. They obviously just got a bit lazy and used the graphics somewhere else. Can't blame them, saves a few quid. But it's a really fun game. Jump around platforms, blast the bad guys, pick things up. What could you not love about this game? It also inspired another game called Joe and Mac. Strikers 1945 Plus from 1999 is a vertically scrolling shooting arcade game developed by, and I get this wrong, Sikyo and published by SNK. 
It's a remake of Strikers 1945-2. That was released in 1997 on multiple platforms. In this game, you fight one of six fighter planes against the FGR organization who leaked information of weapons. Of course, you're just shooting the bad guys. You blast them with your planes, you collect the power-ups, you shoot more bad guys. It's really fun, it's a little bit mm, samey, but we love it. Thrash Rally is a top-down perspective rally racing video game developed by ADK and released by SNK for the Neo Geo system in 1991. And technically it's a spiritual successor to Overtop. Start by choosing your vehicle based on its handling, acceleration and overall speed. It's a high-paced, fast game. I found it impossible to control. It wasn't the kind of game that I was ever any good at. My favourite type of game like this was Supercars back on the old Amiga. It brought back a few memories. I was skidding round the corners like a loony. Yeah, it was fun. Twinkle Star Sprites. It's a strange game. It's the first type of this game that I've ever played. Released in 1996, it's classed as a competitive scrolling shooter arcade game. In a similar vein to Bubble Bobble where if you do well, you get the power-ups, you can drop some stuff on your opponent. Same in this. Power up, blow the crap out of your opponent, and win. But as you can see in this game, against the computer, I actually lost. Didn't do as well as this as I thought I would, but I did actually enjoy the game. Not quite bubble bobble, but it's fun. I enjoyed it. Viewpoint is an isometric scrolling shooting game by Acom and originally released in 1992 by Sammy for the Neo Geo. It instantly reminded me of Zaxxon and I thought I was going to absolutely hate the game. But luckily there's none of this up and down different level movements. It's our type at a funny angle. That's the easiest way of describing it. It's fun, it's colourful, it's not that difficult, not compared to Zaxxon anyway. And it's a game that I enjoyed. Not really a fan of these isometric shooters, but as games go, this one, not too bad at all. Windjammers is one of those games that you either love it or hate it. It was released by Data East in 1994, and is exactly what happens if you take the game of Pong, too many hours of programming, some weird and wonderful graphics, and try and make a new game out of it. I found it quite fun. I was absolutely horrible at trying to control the main guy. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. I kept dropping the ball. I thought to myself, yeah, this is kind of like volleyball, but not volleyball, but pong, but something else. In the end, I gave up. I sucked at this. Z-Blade horizontal scrolling shooting game released in 1994, published by SNK and developed by NMK. Lots of little letters all around these games. It's basically Gradius 3 and Last Resort put together, mixed up, and you assume the role of one of three playable characters. You've got Master Sergeant, Uncle Beard, and Sergeant Miss Charlotte. Bit of a strange name. But it's fun, it's colourful, it's hectic as hell. It's a game I really enjoy playing. Uh, give it a go, you won't be disappointed. Zupapa is a platform arcade video game developed by Face and originally published by SNK on September the 1st, 2001. It's a weird game. Players are tasked traveling through nine stages, throwing small creatures called Zooks. Who comes up with this stuff? jumping on and off platforms, navigating obstacles, dodging and defeating monsters. It's a weird game. It kind of reminded me of a cross between Bubble Bobble and Snow Brothers. But I did find it enjoyable. It's bright, it's colourful, it's got great sound effects. Enjoy it, I certainly did. Give it a go. Cyberlip is a run and gun game released in the arcade by SNK in 1990 and on the home consoles in 1991. I honestly thought the game was called Cyber Up until I actually looked on the Wikipedia page and saw it clearly written as Cyberlip. 
Now, if you look at the graphic on the right hand side, it does look like it's up. I thought that was a weird name. I was totally wrong. Standard type of gameplay, run along, shoot the bad guys, defeat end of stage bosses and get things like flamethrowers and all sorts. Limited ammunition, still a fun game though. Bang Bead released in the year 2000 by Visco Corporation, published by SNK, is the sequel to Battle Flip Shot. It's a freaking weird game. It's like Pong, with Breakout, with weird fighting characters. You smash the ball at each other, knocking out their stars, knocking out each other. I hadn't got a clue what the hell I was doing when I was playing this, but I actually found it really good fun. Uh, played it quite a few games. Didn't really win many of them. But the main thing is, it's bloody fun. It's a brilliant idea. It's got fun graphics too. Give it a go. Andro Junos, developed again by Visco Corporation, originally published in June 1992. It's the first title created by Visco for both the Neo Geo arcade and home platforms. It's one of those ones that's got a weird and wonderful Wikipedia explanation, taking place on a futuristic sci-fi setting where an unknown alien race, bloody unknown aliens, yeah, get the story straight. They have steadily increased their invasion activities. You assume control of the Yellow Cherry and Red Fox spacecrafts. Basically fly around blasting crap up. It's a great game. Enjoyed it. Alpha Mission 2, released in 1991 by SNK, is your standard vertical scrolling full screen shoot 'em up. Go along, two or three buttons to use, shoot the crap out of the bad guys, air to air laser shots, air to ground missile shots. It's a good game, it's colourful graphics, quite cute graphics actually. It was a game I enjoyed playing. Um, you collect your power ups, get your extra drones and weapons and armours and all of that kind of stuff. I enjoyed playing it, it's a classic and simple game, but I liked it. Nightmare in the Dark is a platform game developed by AM Factory with the assistance of Payon. It was released January the 27th in the year 2000, but never actually received an official release for the Neo Geo Home or CD platforms. Basically, you play a gravekeeper and you go around the graveyards protecting them from evildoers. You clear the area, collect power-ups and use those power-ups to eliminate the enemies over five stages. Similar to Snow Brothers, when you keep throwing fireballs at these enemies, they will ignite into a giant fireball, which you can then throw at other enemies and kill them. Really good game, actually. Neo Bomberman is... Who needs to actually describe what Bomberman is? If you've never played Bomberman, you are not a gamer of any calibre. Made by Hudson Soft, released on the Neo Geo in 1997. It's just fantastic fun. Run around, drop bombs, blow up the enemies, play multiplayer games, blow your friends up. This one you can play up to two players. It's just a classic game. It's one of the funnest games that you can play with a friend. In 1999, SNK released Metal Slug X. What is Metal Slug X? It's Metal Slug 2 actually done properly, without any of the slowdowns and the crawl and the bugs and everything else like that. This game, Metal Slug X, runs so smoothly, it's so much fun. Blow up a number of enemies in the screen and they don't all kind of jig jack across the place and look like it's about to crash. It's bloody fun, it's Metal Slug, what's not to like about it? If you've not played the X, play it now. League Bowling, released by SNK in 1990, is exactly what it says on the tin. It's a game of bowling. I thought I was going to really enjoy this. I'm pretty good in real life at bowling. I've played a few bowling games in my time. I thought this would be a cinch. Couldn't get the hang of the controls. I was throwing the ball all over the bloody place. Kind of managed to get the odd strike now and again. Unfortunately, I didn't record that. Bloody typical. Looking at Swobbly playing like shite. Look at that. Got a spare. I was getting excited. I enjoyed the game. I was rubbish at it though.
Thank you for watching my video. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon for future content. Really hope you've enjoyed some of these Neo Geo games. Coming soon will be the top 50 countdown of the best Neo Geo games ever. Look out for that video coming soon. If you're a fan of retro games, smash the left hand side box. If you like a few game reviews that are fun, hit the right hand box. Subscribe to my channel, just smash me in the face. Go on, I dare you. Thanks again. Catch you in the next video.